What do you want to talk about today, Batch? <laughs> Man, I like the idea of us talking about sh- sharing our experiences with social media. Mm. So you've been doing it way longer than me. So I want to know, when did, when did you get to the point where you just... Because I'm at this space where I feel like people expect me to be some master scriptorian. They oh, expect yeah. me to have the answers. Well, some people want me to have the answers for their life. And I'm like, I'm about 20, 30 years behind you. I <laughs> I have yet to understand. And then you have the people who, the Bible bashers that yeah. were, what about this scripture? And I was like, it, it got to the point where me sharing my testimony and me having those authentic experiences, learning from myself has turned into, you know, I need to be right all the time. And I'm like, that's not why I started my social media. It was to share my joy of yeah. learning who I am through the Savior. I totally understand that. Because, like, my videos are, like, very academic in yeah. nature, as you know. Um, and so people assume that I am just a genius and that I know all about all these things. And the way I look at it is I don't know. I, like, I'm not a credentialed scholar, right? And, um, and I'm relieved when I get a video out because then I feel like I, I have kind of offloaded all that information and I don't need to keep it in my head anymore. And so oftentimes people will ask me something that I've done a video on and that I know that like at some point I was knowledgeable about, but I can't remember now. Um, so I think what I've kind of, the conclusion that I've come to is that, uh, if your focus is on loving people more than being right all the time, I think that that is helpful because if your focus is being right all the time, then when you don't know the answer to a question, you get defensive. You get stressed. I'm telling you. And you you. get stressed. Um, But if your focus is on loving other people, then if somebody asks you a question, you don't, you don't know the answer to, you can just be like, that's a great question. I, I haven't thought about that before. I don't know the answer. Give me some time to, you know, try to find some resources on it and I'll get back to you. Um, but yeah, I totally relate with that, that expectation. And it's a, it's a lot of, it can be a lot of weight to bear, I feel like. Yeah. But um, if your focus is on just loving other people and helping them feel heard and seen, um, I think that's the, I think that's the answer. No, and I, I love that. Cause when you say about like that pressure that you feel, I have felt less pressure when I feel like it's not my job to be right. And yeah. when I realize it's not my job to be right, my job is just to share my experience the way that I experience it. And if you enjoy it, great. If you don't enjoy it, then Hey, that's that you have that right to do that as well. And in that I found, like, I remember I had, cause I pray over my videos. Um, I pray for your videos too, man. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> I legit pray over them because I know that I'm cool being wrong. Like I'm comfortable with that, but I would just hope for the discernment to know that, Hey, like you could have said this differently. You could have gone about this differently. And there have been many videos where I look back and I'm like, yeah, Lord, I probably should have taken my precautions here. And it's been a learning experience in that regard. But I remember one video that I felt so strongly about, um, I felt super prompted to share it. And I had, I don't have these, I don't have those experiences very often. And I shared it. No views, no, like no kind of interactions. It wasn't something that went viral, but it is, I will argue it is my best video to date, but I will post a video just like me and my fiance in the car. And I'm just like, Hey, let me, let me talk about garments on top of my car right now. And mm. then I post that video through the roof takes off, takes off and I'm like, no, this is the video that I probably should have taken my time on and, and, and learned about like different things on how to answer. Cause then I get people messaging me about different stuff and I'm just like, oh my gosh. What have and I so done? I just realized that when it comes to social media, it's just, it is interesting to see what people would rather pick up on and then not getting caught up in that because it gets to the point where we are, we are in a space. And I think Saints Unscripted and your page keystone i think that those are two of the best pages across instagram i'm and i and i include that with any kind of lifestyle video like anything even outside the gospel those are two pages that i know that like i will die on the hill that people watch those videos that even if they're not christians that their love of their higher being will increase without a doubt 
But those pages don't go viral as some of the other creators that I see in the LDS world. And man, it upsets me. <laughs> and it upsets me because I know some of these creators do things and say things just to get a response, just to get a reaction. But they are not the source that I would recommend people listen to. Yeah. And I wouldn't even recommend people. I think for my, like my page, I'm cool with people just enjoying who I am as a person, personality wise, you know, like someone to kick it with and vibe with. But if, if I'm looking for someone to like, if I'm going to educate somebody on something, I always just like in the comment section, I'd be like, Hey, I, I would go to Saints Unscripted for this. Or I might just tag one of your videos. Like this is probably a better source than I am. I'm just the, I am just the person I'm doing a reaction video. That's me. I'm, I'm reacting to it. I'm, I'm learning from them and then experimenting. So my page is ex super, super experimental. And so, man, I don't know how you have dealt with that because you've been consistently making co content for a long time. Mm. And y the one thing I admire is that you have never sacrificed the need for likes and comments for the message. So you've always stayed true to the message and you've never done anything to bait people. How have you maintained that, bro? Without like, because it gets to the point where social media is an engagement game. It's a game within the game. Yeah. And how do you not well, even fall trapped to that that's something i'm trying to um balance right now especially on keystone but i i don't know the more i'm in front of the camera um i feel like the more introverted i become <laughs> behind the scenes a little bit um so on saints unscripted with the faith and beliefs videos i didn't want to be on thumbnails <laughs> um, because it wasn't about me. Right. And I didn't want it to seem like I was making it about me. Um, at the same time, just, just the, the social media game is if you have your face on the thumbnail, the face of the host or whatever, the recognizable face, then you get more views. And, um, so on Keystone, you're going to see my face a lot on the thumbnails and, and that's hard for me to just like kind of balance because i still don't want people to think that it's all about me i want i don't want to distract from the message but i also want the message to get out there yeah. to as many people as possible um and so it's a hard balance and uh keystone is somewhat experimental in that sense as well where we're trying to like because sometimes we'll go through like title options for videos and you know sometimes the title might come up you know, debunking this guy <laughs> that said this crazy thing. Yeah. And, and I'm just like, oh, I don't want to necessarily like be that guy that's yeah. like out to debunk people. And, yeah. and, but I also want an engaging title. And so, you know, we'll go through a lot of options. Um, but I think it's just, I've been in a situation, I used to work for a website where their success was based on views and when that is the measure of your success then you you compromise a lot yeah. i feel like like it was all clickbaity it was about it, the website was about family right yeah but we found that the most views came from articles that were titled you know three ways you know your man is cheating on you <laughs> and just like clickbaity things like that that were preying on you know women's insecurities uh and it got views it got, it views. got views um and i learned from that experience that i never want to <laughs> do things like that um and so i'm grateful right now to be in a situation where success isn't necessarily measured by views yeah, yeah we want to get it out to as many people as possible but uh it's the experiences that people share after watching the videos that are i think the most valuable um and that i cherish the most so i think those have been the things that have gotten me you know through years of videos that maybe haven't performed as well as I would have hoped that they would have but at the same time those videos are there and and i also want them to be kind of a database of information for people they may not be viral videos but if somebody has a specific question about james strang in 1846 you know well there's 
there's a, there's something there for them. So, so that's kind of been my perspective on it, but, um, no, I, I also I, just need a really vibrant pink flashy car. <laughs> I really think that that is what I've been missing, but my man, Mazda dude. isn't quite cutting it. Dude, getting married, man. I might have checked that thing in, bro. Might have checked it in. But, um, dude, I have like, I don't know if you've ever heard those like conspiracy theories where, you know, that um, companies won't. Like, I, I, let's take medicine, for example. They'll never give you medicine. They'll completely heal you because then you won't mm. have to go back. Or like um, somebody finds, finds like a renewable energy source and yeah. then mysteriously dies yeah. a week later. And so wh- the reason why I bring that up is because I feel like whether or not those things are true or not, I, I couldn't tell you 100%. But what I can say is I think social media has taken that turn where social media is a place where you know, people want you to keep coming back for more. And if you start basing yourself on views and likes, you're going to do things where you're not going to provide like the final solution. I think a lot of mm. people that I see posting about faith, um, even in the LDS content creation space, I see people talking and making content a lot about the fruit and not about like the root cause of things. For example, you might see someone make a video on, you know, um, you can you can be mormon and still do this and try to be like edgy but in reality i see that that person that's trying to be edgy there is like a core issue that's at their heart that's not being solved and if you make a video on that and it does solve that person's problem then if we're being honest as creators there's no need for us because their need is the savior Mm -hmm. and so once you turn them to the savior then there's no need for them to keep coming back to your page but i see these other pages that kind of just feed these fruits and never heal the root and you see these people keep going back to these pages that may not be helping them develop their testimony and i've seen people fall away from the gospel because of that and so i have been very weary about like the click baby stuff and all that kind of stuff because i'm like you know i don't want my page to be that i want them to you know not not necessarily cause i've seen people say man I, I love your content need your content keep it up and I'm just like, uh, like as, as great as it sounds, right? At first, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm doing a service. But then it gets to the point where it's like, dude, my, the easiest solution is take every love that you've had for anything, anybody, combine it and put it to the Savior. And I promise you, within a year, you will be a completely different person that won't recognize that person you are. And that is like it. And, and the reality is, if all my followers did that and all those people who claim that you know, they might need my page. They will not have a need for me anymore. And I would just be, you know, more of like a, a friend, you know, more like a friend to watch, maybe a character to watch, who knows, like whatever people think. And that's what I think for me is what makes it fun. It's just people realizing that we are all to an extent mirrors of each other. And we all end up, we share this, we share the same common goal of developing the same kind of attributes at the end of the day, but we just one might do it in a minivan and one might do it in a pink Tesla. But the reality is, 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 is we're both doing the same I don't own store a line. minivan. I, I didn't say you did, but I, I did tell my I said to my fiance, I said, dude, I'm going to be that minivan LDS guy. Oh, yeah. I, oh, without a doubt. It's still going to be pink. And... Oh, without a doubt. But I drove a minivan. Bro, I drove a minivan. I don't know why minivans got bad raps in the church, but I see people driving, you know, the these big, nicer uh, SUVs. Mm-hmm. But I went in a minivan, bro, like for a, for a road trip. That might be the greatest car ever created dude. first class just like the space that's in there the technology like even just letting you know like i'm pretty sure on the cruise control they they, they let you stay in your lane it's like self-driving like a tesla oh yeah oh, i'm telling you man that's but living the life that's living a life <laughs> no well i like what you're saying about like kind of being mirrors um because i think it's so funny because we you and i could not be more different <laughs> On many levels, um, I'm really cool, and you're kind of mid. That's what I'm saying. That's um, what that's what bothers me. It's like, <laughs> how do I change that? Um, but despite how different we are, like like you reach a totally different like demographic than I do. Um, I'm sure there's some overlap, but like your videos are totally different than my style of videos. But uh, we're after the same thing ultimately 
and that's bringing people closer to Christ, whether that is through answering questions that they might have about church history or, um, you know, whatever it may be. And, and that's why I think we, we work really well together, even though we're on opposite ends of the spectrum in some ways. Color spectrum? Can I make that? <laughs> can I make that joke? <laughs> you Many made, ways. We all made a joke. We were always waiting for you to say it. I was, I, yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Just, I was testing the waters there to see just, if we, we were on that level uh, yet. No, of course. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> um, no, I am like, oh man, I'm the, I am so white. It's incredible. <laughs> like you wouldn't even know. Like the music I listen to is just anyway. Um, but. But I think we work really well together because we have the same goal in mind. Um, That's the beauty of the gospel. Yeah. That's what I love is the fact that we can go to the same testimony meeting and you can share your experience about something that makes sense to you culturally um, and your upbringing. And you can share a principle of the gospel that's helped you overcome something in your life. And I can immediately reflect and be able to empathize and understand where you are coming from, even though I may come from a completely different world than you. And I will never, ever need to see Jesus face to face in my mortal lifetime for me to believe that the church is true, because something as simple as that just solidifies my testimony in the gospel, because there's no way something could be that congruent and not be true. Mm -hmm. And I think like that's what is the beauty of social media is that people can have the opportunity to see your page, see my page and be like, oh, they might be completely different, but why do I feel the same way when I listen to both of them, you know? Mm. And I think that's fun. We still need to do that. that I thought that late night show. Yeah. The late night, the late night show. Cause we have this idea, you guys to doing like a late night type of, uh, man, the only person I know is, um, Arsenio Hall, late night Arsenio Hall, but who's, who has a late night show? What's this, uh, Stephen Colbert. Stephen Colbert. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. Jimmy who, Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. I don't know. Jimmy Fallon, Arsenio Hall. It's like basically what we would do is we would talk about topics in the gospel. It could be culturally, historically, um, doctrinally. And we would have like different acts show up. We would have performances. We would have food there. Just a chance to vibe. And it'd be like a live setting. And I have been sitting on this idea for a minute. And this might be a good way to post about it. If you guys would be interested in that at all, you guys have to let us know. It'll be local here in, in Utah, but who knows? If people love it enough, we might have to take it to Idaho, Arizona, California. The wilds of Idaho. Yeah, take it take it to D.C. We're really dreaming big there. Yeah, so, hey, if you guys are interested in Burley, showing up. Burley, Idaho. <laughs> hey, man, I got to get out to Idaho. But if you are interested, we would love to, we would love to, to bring these kind of conversations and uh, bring this kind of vibe to you guys. Public speaking makes me so nervous still. Dude, it's... I've been doing it for years. <laughs> I don't know how you get nervous, bro. Do you have every answer Every answer you have? I don't have every answer, Dude, but but just like... Oh, my fault. I can't say that online because then y'all going to come for my dog. But <laughs> no, <nah, laughs> every question I've had, questions about you have answered. So I appreciate that. And I also appreciate, I just want to give a public shout out that when I was figuring out my testimony on race and religion and... um trying to understand the history of the church um, with blacks in the priesthood, the insights that you provided were a huge help. And the fact that someone like yourself could take the time and the effort into learning about the history of my people and treat it as if, you know, treat it with the reverence that it deserves. I appreciate that because a lot of members would disregard it and just say, well, it's just this. Oh, well, it's just that. But when people like you do that, it's incredibly powerful because then people like me feel comfortable coming into a space that the world deems as racist, but we know it is home. And so someone like you being able to do that and being willing to do that, because I know it's for sure one, not easy. It's not a, it's not an easy issue to deal with. Super complicated, super complex when it talks about race and someone like you being willing to tackle it when there's a, probably a whole bunch of other things you could be doing. I want to, you know, I appreciate it, big dog. Hey, sure thing. That are, you're referring to probably the race and the priesthood faith and beliefs video. Yeah. It's like 20 minutes long or yeah. something. Yeah. That's my f favorite video. Dude, you, you nailed that one. That we've done. Well, Taylor behind the camera, he's our editor. Oh, oh, oh shout out to Taylor. crushed it. <laughs> crushed it. And that video took so long to produce. Really? Just because 
there's so much history there. Most of our, you know, the faith and beliefs videos on Saints Unscripted were about six minutes long, but that one, we were just like, dude, there's I no way. Dude, I watched every minute, and that's when I was like, dude, that had such a big impact on me. Because, dude, any, any other video, dude, that's so lazy with it. It's just like, well, you know, that's, that's just back then. Like, they don't do that now. They love us now. I'm like, who... Who's they? Like, what are we talking about? Like, we need to get into the intricacies of this because this stuff does matter. This stuff does play an impact. And the better you understand a complex topic like this, the greater your testimony will be in the gospel. And so even for me to understand that, um, you guys videos on Joseph Smith and polygamy, because a lot mm -hmm. of that bothered me as well. Yeah. And being able to learn in discomfort, dude, that is what that's the kind that's the greatest kind of content you could produce is allowing people to learn in their discomfort, because mm -hmm. if not then people feel just comfortable and justified and not growing their testimony of the savior. So. Yeah. I'm totally fine with people being uncomfortable with history because that's the way it is that's sometimes. I just want to make sure that people are uncomfortable about true history. Yeah. And that's a lot of what I grapple with is filtering between the stuff that is true and not true. Cause I just, it upsets me when, when, you know, somebody comes and says, oh, the church lied to me about this thing. And so I'm out. And then they turn around and start spreading false information yeah. about, you know, something that didn't happen. And it's just like, aren't you like you've you've lived long enough to become the enemy? What's the Batman quote? Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, you live long. Well, die a hero. You live long enough to see yourself become a villain. Yeah. And so it's just like, why? Anyway, but um no, I, I think that's tough, though, because then you're dealing with how do you balance out people's real issues with um, it just becomes convoluted with people's real issues and um, things that they're trying to make look like real yeah. issues. And that's what for me, it's just because, for example, um, I've had bad experiences with bishops. That's a real thing. People have bad experiences with bishops. Yeah. But if that determines your testimony of Jesus Christ, like, like, where do you draw the line where you can say, Hey, that's, that is separate from my testimony of savior. And then you deal with people. When we talk about history, I had someone comment, how can you be uh, like, you don't hold like, I, I, I'm all for holding people accountable. They're like, you're not holding people accountable. Like you're cool with Joseph Smith sleeping with a 14 year old. And so I was just like, you know, I'm going to have this person figure it out for themselves. So I start engaging with them in a conversation. And like, so this is from your church website that he was sealed to a 14 year old girl. And I said, sealed to and sleeping with are two vastly different things, brother. And if you were to see how they implemented ceilings back in the day, they were working through things. They didn't really know what they're doing as, as, as we know it to be now. Yeah. And so there's so much that goes into that, but to, uh, but to blatantly say that, with when there is no not only is there no evidence but both parties have came out and said like that is not true at all and for them to be cool with just spreading that online for me it's just like that stuff just gets me upset because I, I what you said about history and um being uncomfortable with true history like for me that's fine with me being uncomfortable with true history hey how did this play out why was it like this and try to understand context it's like okay that makes way more sense than just trying to look at it from not just the lens that we view things as, but something completely that did not happen at all. That's what just frustrates yeah. me. And then you get to the point where like, do I want to spend the rest of my day arguing with someone about something that's not true? Or do I want to focus on, yeah. like you said, loving people? So. Well, and that's the thing is it's, it's important to understand who your audience is yeah. or who you want your audience to be. Because the chances are like when I engage with someone that's critical in comment sections, I want to get through to the critic. Yes. But I'm probably more concerned about the more sincere people who might view those comments, you know, yeah. or be influenced by those comments. Um, if I think it's really easy sometimes for creators, LDS creators, to take something a critic says that may be completely wrong or misleading and to just trash on them. Yeah. Um, but what if there's somebody who is really struggling with that, you know, that like hasn't made up their mind about it yet? What if there's somebody, you know, who has heard that Joseph Smith was married to a 14 year old and this is new information to them 
And then I get on there and say, this is so dumb. Like nobody should be concerned about this. Like anybody who has questions about this clearly doesn't know anything. You can't do that at all. Like that's completely marginalizing, you know, this, this person's experience and, and their process of, you know, their learning process really. Um, and so one thing that I've learned over the years is just to be, you know, to be sensitive, to try to be uh, sympathetic or empathetic towards people because everybody has to go through that learning process at some point. Um, and nobody wants to be, nobody wants to feel made fun of because they're struggling, yeah. you know? And, and that's the realization that I had to have because culturally, um, growing up, roasting at the lunch table and getting on people that's just that was normal and always having a response always having a quick response yeah that was like my thing dropping the up. mic yeah and as i made content i had just i mean i don't know like, i'm still having trouble trying to discern if it's the spirit or me but right with a bit i say don't worry about it but it got to the point where i realized that there's no way that i can justify any unchrist-like response mm -hmm. and even if the person is being unchrist like i still can't justify um going at them even though sometimes i would love to and um the realization came from i had encountered someone in public and they're like hey um they were inactive in church but they were starting to become more active because of some of the videos that they had seen and one thing that they applauded me for was i love how you respond to um everybody with uh with love and like they don't know that the backstory behind that was like my mom getting on me and my mom telling me like, Hey, I'm sick of going online and seeing you, you know, ha ha having to go at people. Like you don't need to respond to them. And then my dad telling me, Hey man, you focus so much on the people that don't like you. What about the people that do love you? Mm -hmm. And this was years ago. And so then I was like, you know, I got, I got to grow up and I got to grow up and stop doing that. And so, and then to have that person encounter me and say that, I'm like, you know, what? If, if, even if, the whole world doesn't notice and it helped that this one person, you know, I guess it was worth it then. And then me realizing that when I try to go at somebody, that's when I realized, you know, maybe this, the stuff I'm doing has become about me. Maybe I lost my way. Maybe I lost who it's really about, because if it was really about the savior, then I wouldn't worry about somebody coming at me because that's not for me to worry about. My focus should have been saying things that I feel like the savior needs me to say, or saying the things that mean a lot to me. And then just letting people exercise their agency and go from there and so i don't know man it's a journey i'm still learning some days yeah. i'm not gonna lie some days <laughs> some days if I, haven't, if I haven't ate man if i haven't <laughs> ate or i'm on a losing streak in madden i just bachelor gets a little hangry, it might get a little hangry. <laughs> but i think that as members of the church sometimes we develop almost an irrational level of fear of cognitive dissonance now, nobody likes cognitive dissonance, right? Like it's uncomfortable. Yeah. But I think that it's baked into the restoration. Like our articles of faith say explicitly that there are many great and important things that have yet to be revealed, are yet to be revealed, right? And that implies that there are many great and important questions that we don't have answers to yet. And I think that we need to learn how to be okay with that sometimes yeah. and be patient with that and let things play out a little bit and not necessarily, you know, panic and throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, I think it's okay to, to sit with dissonance a little bit. The Lord understands your heart. Like he understands if you're struggling with a certain topic and, you know, I, I so for example you know Brigham Young said something racist and that causes cognitive dissonance and you're like oh what do I do with this and I think a lot of people are just like well I got to leave the church yeah. because I don't want to I don't want to associate with a church that might make me appear to support this right and if that's the paradigm we take towards any organization we're not going to be part of any organization Anything. yeah and same thing with like a country like oh i got to leave this country cuz there's this law i don't i don't mm -hmm. agree with like nobody does that um but i think it, i think you know our relationship is with the savior and he he knows that i don't agree with that racist thing that brigham young said um and i don't need to care necessarily about what everybody else thinks about my beliefs you yeah. know like I think sometimes they project beliefs onto you that you don't necessarily hold, but 
but sitting with discomfort and dissonance and uh, processing it um, and working through it and then hitting the books and doing good homework to see if it can be resolved. Oftentimes it can be resolved. Always. Um, oftentimes it can be. Sometimes there are great and important questions we don't have answers to yet and we wait and see and do the best we can with the knowledge that we have. No, I, my job, that's, I love it. I think that's your discipleship changes once you realize how to sit with that and how to be cool with not knowing. And it doesn't necessarily mean like, I think there's a talk that talked about, it's not about being patient. It's about being actively patient. Like you can work on your discipleship as you work through the issues that you might have. And how do members not sit with what they don't know, but how do members deal with other people putting false beliefs onto them. And that is something that I feel like needs to be taught in Sunday school for kids to learn. Because as adults, I don't know if we're all equipped to be able to handle that. Because as, as we post as creators online, um, we are putting ourselves out there for people to put beliefs on us that, that we do not agree with. And when we talk about race, that's something special. Every time I post about faith, it's like people think I forgot. They remind me that I'm black. Every time I post on TikTok and like, does this guy not know who who is racist? Does this guy not know the church history? Does this guy um, hate himself? And I have to be cool with the fact that I don't have to prove anything to them at all. I and and wasting my time, the, the time that God has given me to live the life that he expects me to live. If I waste that time trying to prove myself to them, then am I doing things for the honors of men or am I doing things for the honors of him? You know, and so. It's tough, but once you become cool with that, your discipleship completely changes because it's just like, okay, if I'm good with God and I know where my heart is, um, then everything else will kind of sort itself out. And those people typically will circle back if they have good hearts and apologize. But if not, then you know what? Like we love them regardless. And having to be in that situation where I have the opportunity to even be able to learn those lessons, I think that's a blessing in itself. So that's great perspective. (sighs) Yeah, and that's something I don't. I mean, I can't even imagine what that would be like because that's like a very like, that's such a personal oh, thing to point out. Like I've never had anybody come to me and be like, "Does this guy not know he's white?" <laughs> like that's never happened to me. But like, that would be, I mean, weird. But like, that's a Dude, really personal thing. The idea of blackness and race is so misunderstood within people because. I'm not even to get into a history lesson, but obviously when they ship slaves off from Africa, it's like, I think 400,000 came to America, but so many went to South America, so many went to the Caribbean. So there's so many different areas of black people and me being black from Texas, I can't really relate to someone black from New York or black from California because every state has their own individual culture. And so, but people just group everything all in one and then they don't understand that, hey, like not only about free thinking, but just Being like, there's certain things that you can relate to as another black person culturally, right? Um, There's certain things that we can understand in terms of having to deal with, you know, racist remarks. But then when you dive deeper into the soul of a person, that that strictly is based on the family that you come from. So my perspective on the Savior Jesus Christ is going to be different from somebody else in a different household. But people are not patient enough to learn about that and to be comfortable with nuance. They just want things just to. Yeah. No pun intended. Be black and white, but that's just not how life has ever been or will will ever be. And if it was like that, then why would we even be living? That is a boring way to live life. Yeah. So 2024, I, I'm I am confident that we live in the most developed generation just because we have so much to look back on and learn. But I do think things exist on the pendulum. So as as brilliant as we can be, we can also be the most ignorant because. Our grandparents, great grandparents dealing with the times that they had, I can understand why they're they're like culturally ignorant. But 2024, you have no excuse to be. And so at this point, it's a choice. Back Mm -hmm. then, it's like a lifestyle. But now it's a choice. And if you sit with that choice, then uh, that's on you. So that's what it is. We have our work cut out for us in terms of social media stuff. The other day I saw... um, just it was just like an Instagram reel of a video um, being demolished, right? So they have the the little explosives that go off on each oh, level, okay, and then just gone. Yeah. And there are people out there on social media that are trying to do that 
to other people, to the faith of other people. You know? um, okay, hold on, back up. Did we say that again. That was good. I I completely was thinking about the wrong thing. I, and make, I was like, it's a metaphor here. All right, well, man, my heart was. I was like, you said if people doing it to other people, I said, wait, people what? are destroying buildings. <laughs> no, okay, so I saw something on Instagram that was a great metaphor for what I see on social media in general. So the video was of a skyscraper being demolished. So I had the explosives. It, obviously, it was a planned demolition. They had explosives go off on each floor and the whole thing just immediately Collapse. crumbles into dust, collapses. And when it comes to faith and like someone's house of faith, I see people doing this online all over the place on every social media platform, not just towards Latter-day Saints. Uh, they're doing it towards Catholics. Atheists are doing it to Protestants. Protestants are doing it to Latter-day Saints. Like there are people of all types in all different groups, right? And I just thought, you know, about how quick and easy it is sometimes to just like take down that building. And then I thought, how long did it take to construct that oh, building? It's so true. And they're just on opposite ends of the spectrum. And so like my question for creators is, are you, and not just creators, but people on social yeah. media, people commenting, are you trying to just light a fuse to drop a building or are you trying to build something? And if you are trying to build something, what are you trying to build? And that's the thing. Like I often see people criticizing our faith. For example, I did a reaction video, response video to a Catholic apologist named Trent Horn the other day. Um, and in his video, it was just, I was responding to an Instagram reel and there was no like promotion of Catholicism. Like he was not saying anything about Catholicism. It was just criticizing or attacking our faith. And so that's an instance where I see somebody trying to knock a building down, but he wasn't trying to replace it with anything at that point in time, at least yeah. I'm sure he promotes Catholicism in other videos. Um, but that bothers me so much because I think oftentimes what happens, you'll have, you know, an evangelical Protestant um, criticize the church and maybe destroy someone's house of faith and get them to leave the church. But the chances are just based on personal experience from what I've seen, that person is not going and becoming an evangelical Protestant. Yeah. They're becoming an agnostic or an atheist because you've crushed their house of faith and you haven't built anything better for them. Yeah. And so I think that when it comes to us as content creators, we're trying to build something and that is an uphill battle because all of social media seems to be kind of forming around the, the impact of destroying things. It's more fun to look at, right? Yeah. It's, it's not like watching grass grow <laughs> is not necessarily the most entertaining thing to look at. That's chopping a tree down. Chopping a tree down as a, you know, watching a lawnmower go over the grass, that's more entertaining. Um, but we're trying to build something and it's hard to do on social media, especially when people are just trying to tear down everything you've built at every step in the comment sections. But, um, but it matters like that. There's value there. And I think it's a fight worth fighting, you know? No, I love that dude. And we can honestly end on that note that we have we have that responsibility, not only as creators, but people engaging with the content to do our best to build what we can. And honestly, I think a lot of pressure is not a pressure. Responsibility is on the creators because we understand that the the common viewer is just going to scroll, scroll, scroll. They're not going to scroll, look and then go look for more context. So if you're not providing more context in the video that you're doing, it is like you, you open yourself up to. Yeah. Yeah. And then you also like if you if that person is like trying to tear down the, the church or whatnot, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here. I'm, of course, it hurts. Right. But. If you're going to tear down the church, at least provide a way for them to be able to draw themselves closer to the savior. If you don't think it's with our church and provide a way for them to do so, you know, because if you're not going to do that, then you're just you're jeopardizing that person's life for a couple likes and views for your account. So, yeah. But yeah. This was fun, and this went longer than I thought, so I apologize. We'll see how <laughs> well, long it turns out to be. But hey, man. I, I want to continue this. This was fun. So y'all love it. Like, comment, subscribe. I don't know everything we got to do. Share it. So we're out of here. Great. Cool. That was fun, bro. Yeah, it was great.